The Adjustment Bureau is a 2011 American science fiction romantic thriller film written and directed by George Nolfi, based on the 1954 Philip K. Dick short story Adjustment Team. Starring Matt Damon, Emily Blunt, Anthony Mackie, John Slattery, and Terence Stamp, the film tells the story of a United States congressman who discovers that what appear to be chance events in his life are controlled by a mysterious powerful group. After an event not planned by these controllers occurs a romantic encounter with a dancer he struggles against their manipulation, despite their promise of a great future for him. The film was released on April 3, 2011. It was premiered at the Ziegfeld Theater on February 14, 2011, and received positive reviews from critics. It grossed $127 million against a production budget of $50 million. Did you know? The phone number given to Matt Damon by Emily Blunt in the movie, 212-664-7665, is owned by Universal Studios and has appeared in other films distributed by the company. Some of Emily Blunt's dancing scenes were completed using a body double, dancer Acacia Shatched of the Cedar Lake Company, with the actress's face being digitally placed on the dancer's body. David Norris wears a baseball cap with the letter F, standing for Fordham University where some of the movie was filmed. In his speech at the 2011 White House Correspondents' Dinner, President Barack Obama responded to criticism from star Matt Damon with, Matt Damon said he was disappointed in my performance. Well Matt, I just saw the Adjustment Bureau. If you notice closely, David Norris's face in the Expose magazine in the beginning of the movie is the same face he makes while at the club with Elise. Storyline warning spoiler. In 2006, Brooklyn Congressman David Norris unsuccessfully runs for the United States Senate. While rehearsing his concession speech, David meets Elise Sellers. They share a passionate kiss, though he does not get her name. Inspired by her, David delivers an unusually candid speech that is well received, making him a favorite for the next campaign. A month later, David prepares for a new job. At Madison Square Park, near David's home, Harry Mitchell receives an assignment from his superior Richardson. Harry is to spill coffee on David's shirt by 7.05 a.m., so he misses his bus. However, he falls asleep, David boards the bus, meets Elise again and gets her phone number. David arrives at work early and finds everyone in the building frozen and being examined by unfamiliar men. Attempting to escape, he is incapacitated and taken to a warehouse. Richardson reveals the existence of the Adjustment Bureau. As its staff, Richardson and his men ensure people's lives proceed following the plan, a complex document Richardson attributes to the chairman. They destroy the card with Elise's phone number, and David is warned that, if he tells anyone about them, or tries to meet Elise again, he will be reset, his memory and personality erased. Three years later, David again encounters Elise after seeing her from a bus window, he has ridden that bus for three years, hoping to see her. He learns that she dances for Cedar Lake Contemporary Ballet. The Bureau tries to prevent them from starting a relationship by altering their schedules and preventing them from meeting. David races across town, fighting the Bureau's efforts to control his choices and stop him from meeting Elise. During the chase they use ordinary doorways to travel instantly to distant locations. Senior official Thompson takes over David's case, taking him to the warehouse, where David argues he has the right to choose his own path. Thompson gives many examples of humanity receiving free will and the Bureau having to take it away, after the height of the Roman Empire, then five centuries of the Dark Ages, the Renaissance, the Enlightenment, and the Scientific Revolution. When free will was restored in 1910, later World War I, the Great Depression, Fascism, the Holocaust, and the Cuban Missile Crisis, again the Bureau retook control. Thompson strongly implies that without Elise's influence David can become President of the United States, while Elise can become a world-famous dancer and choreographer, and being together will ruin both of their futures. Thompson causes Elise to sprain her ankle at a performance to demonstrate his power, and David abandons her at the hospital to avoid ruining their futures as Thompson described. Eleven months later, as David campaigns again, Charlie, 
his campaign manager and lifelong best friend, tells David of Elisa's imminent wedding. Harry contacts David via secret meetings in the rain or near water, which prevents the Bureau from tracking them. Harry reveals that Thompson exaggerated the negative consequences of David and Elisa's relationship and teaches David how to use doors to teleport and evade the Bureau. Just before the wedding David reaches Elise, reveals the Bureau's existence to her, and shows her how to travel through doors. As the Bureau pursues them across New York City, David decides to ask the chairman to end the conflict and Elise chooses to accompany him. They enter the Bureau's offices with agents in pursuit. After a chase through the building, David and Elise find themselves surrounded on the observation deck of the GE building. They declare their love and kiss before David can be caught. When they let go of each other, the Bureau members are gone. Thompson appears, but is interrupted by Harry, who shows him, and then David and Elise, their revised plan from the chairman. One that is blank starting from the current moment. Harry commends them for their devotion to each other and says they are free to leave. As David and Elise walk away, Harry speculates that the chairman may be preparing humanity to one day write its own plan. See you later.